There we go. Quick intro to our applications group. Um, we're spread out across the US, um, Europe, and um, Singapore. And really, we're a team of scientists. So we have um, wet lab scientists and bioinformat bioinformaticians in our group. Um, that, and really, the goal is to work with all of you, work with other researchers um, and scientists and collaborators on pilot studies and proof of concept studies um, to really drive new protocols, workflows um, in your application area of interest. So a lot of us are here today. Please feel free to reach out. We love working and talking to you guys about what, uh, what applications you're interested in. We cover a lot of different um, spaces. Today, we're going to talk about one of those um, collaborations that we did with um, a group at Mount Sinai, so Dr. ben Hur Lee and his lab and team. Um, doing antibody sequencing and um, B cell receptor um, characterization. So this is recently published as a preprint. Um, the, the manuscript's coming very soon. Um, so I'm going to just highlight a couple of those um, areas and some of the things that we did. But there's a ton of work here. So if you have questions, um, please go check that out or come and talk to us. Um, there's way more work in this project than I can cover um, in uh, just today. But really, this was focused on fully characterizing, characterizing the immune system of uh, a single donor from a single blood sample using um, kind of a, a wide variety of sequencing techniques. Um, so I'll just give a little background into um, what we were doing. But essentially, um, we're looking at um, antibody production after vaccination here. So this um, typically, your B cells produce antibodies in response to an infection or a vaccination. Um, this is done by a specialized group of B cells that um, can produce the antibodies, but then also they differentiate into memory B cells, and those memory B cells um, circulate at a low level and also express um, the antibody that recognizes the cognate antigen so that you get long-term um, immunological memory. So we're sort of trying to study this entire system, um, focusing on um, the B cell receptor and, the, and antibody production for this project. Um, so a little more detail, how does this work? So B cells become activated, so they express um, a single an um, antibody or B cell receptor um, on the cell surface. They become activated um, in, a, in a T cell mediated fashion. Um, this is an MHC class two response. And that leads to B cell proliferation and clonal expansion. Um, so then when those clones expand, they can differentiate into the plasma blast population. That's the, the, the population of cells that um, produce high levels of antibodies and secrete them into the bloodstream to neutralize the infection. Um, and then also they can differentiate into the memory B cells as we discussed, so those can circulate at low levels and then re-expand upon um, future um, act, um, recognition of that antigen. Um, and so um, antibodies are structurally complex and diverse, and that's um, because they're f they have to function to recognize all the cognate antigens. Um, unlimited sort of sequence diversity. So this makes them really um, complicated and interesting to study. So they're um, these wide-shaped kind of proteins. They have the variable domain, um, which is sort of the, the part that recognizes the antigen. Um, and that is made up of these VDJ components. So the VDJ um, alleles are in your germline, in the genome sequence. So all cells have those. And then what happens in B cells is as they mature, they sort of edit themselves and only select one allele from each, the v, each of the VDJ regions. Um, and that's done in a heavy and a light chain from your genomic loci. So your, your um, germline has three of these um, loci that produce um, the heavy chain and then two light chains. Those pair up, become um, mRNAs, and then express the protein. So this is all um, a very complicated system at the genome level that we can sequence sort of the non-rearranged um, germline loci just to look at what are the alleles that are present in an individual. This is a highly polymorphic um, loci, so it's um, really diverse depending on the person. Um, and then we can also look at the antibodies that are produced um, from the B cell at the mRNA level, at the transcript level. Um, those are um, somatically hypermutated, so we can also map those back to the um, germline alleles. So there's a lot going on there. Um, in addition to that variable region, there's also a constant domain, um, which is sort of um, involved in class switching. And so that's um, traditionally has been sort of ignored, but we sequence the entire thing, the whole transcript. And so we actually can get the whole constant region. Um, there are subclasses of these domains. These are the IgMs, IgGs, IgAs. Um, so, for example, we, we know that when you look at IgGs, if you, there's a sub, subtype of IgG1, IgG1 and IgG3, you can't distinguish those with short read, but we can distinguish those with our um, nanopore long read workflow. 
Um, so we think those are important. That has a lot to do with the downstream effector biology and signaling pathways of those antibodies. So it's a little bit understudied. Um, so, okay, so our case study that we did, we took a, a blood sample from a person given the MMR vaccine, and then we split that into our two workflows. So this is just a single blood sample, but we're characterizing it in, in multiple ways. Um, so we look at the top um, part of this workflow is for the genomic uh, DNA, where we're doing um, whole genome assembly and looking at the antibody repertoire of the unrearranged um, genomic loci. And then we also took the B cells um, sorted those and then did single cell um, RNA sequencing on those. So we'll start with just the first part, which is this germline assembly of the um, immunoglobulin, the, the, B, the B cell receptor locus. Um, so we did this on our Promethine device, we did this on a single flow cell actually, and we just ended up doing an entire whole um, de novo assembly, whole genome assembly from this blood sample. So we got um, really nice long reads, we got about 40x coverage, 45x coverage, um, we saw Q scores in the, tw in the 20s, and then we actually had a population of reads that were about Q30. Those are the duplex reads that we had. Um, and then we um, developed a bioinformatic pipeline to do de novo assembly. So that's based on um, fly, and we get a really nice human, human um, genome assembly from that. Um, and then what we can do is we can actually pull out the immunoglobulin loci from that assembly. So we filtered out the, um, for example, showing here the um, immunoglobulin heavy chain loci, so that's at the end of chromosome 14. We just extract all those reads from the assembly, and this ended up being a single contig, um, fully phased assembly of the IGH um, loci. So you can see in purple here, those are all the variable, um, uh, are the V genes. So, um, and those are haplotyped, and then we can also see the D and J genes. So this really gives us a super high resolution, comprehensive look at what's going on in this sample in terms of what are all the alleles um, that are present, and um, this gives us a really nice way of filtering out any alleles that um, when you match to an allele database, um, we know that are not present because they're not present in this individual to begin with. So this is what all the B cells start with, and then they can choose, pick and choose these regions as they produce the antibodies. Um, this is a, a IGV trace of the um, reads that we can map against the, the reference databases, and we use this to discover novel alleles. So these are alleles that are only in this specific sample. We do that by looking at the closest related alleles in this IMGT um, database. We can find alleles that are only differ by, differ by one SNP, one or two SNPs, um, and so we call those as novel alleles only existing in this person. Um, and then we also saw methylation, so we can see signatures of hypomethylation around the gene bodies and the transcription start sites um, of, these of the V genes, and then we also can look at the D and J genes and we see the same um, types of patterns. So moving on to the next phase, which was kind of taking the B cells um, and looking at the single cell antibody transcripts um, and subpopulations, so we took, um, we did this by fax and we took the blood, um, the PBMCs, we isolate directly all of the um, B cells, and then we actually monitored over six days to look for the population of plasma blasts that are secreting antibodies. So those show up um, for us um, as this P7 gate after six, day, six days post-vaccination. We also collected the memory um, B cells shown in that P8 gate. So we collected both of those, took those forward to single cell sequencing. So we did this with um, 10x genomics, um, prepare the cDNA um, that way. Um, so we have a protocol available on the Nanopore community where we can um, take cDNA prepared by 10x um, and sequence it directly. The only difference is just don't fragment it because typically that, um, those reads are fragmented when they go into short read. We just keep the whole thing, take the whole transcripts, and sequence them directly with um, our Nanopore library preps. And then we also have an Epitome Labs um, pipeline, bioinformatics pipeline, for looking at um, the single cell analysis. So this is kind of an end-to-end -end workflow. You put in your single cell data, um, and it gives you a lot of these kind of QC traces. Um, it assigns cell barcodes and UMIs, um, and then you can also look at your um, gene expression counts and isoform expression counts. So after you do all of that, this is kind of what it looks like. This is the memory B cell population. We had, I think, about seven or 8,000 cells. Um, and we can look at both the gene expression and the isoform expression here. So you can see at the gene expression level, you start to see some clustering. These are, e each dot is a cell, and you start to group cells by um, transcripts that are expressed commonly within each cluster, e in each group. 
Um, but when we really look at the isoform expression, so that's something that you get with the full length long read transcripts, you can um, start to see a little bit better clustering and, a, and better separation between the clusters in these groups. Um, and so why is that? Well, it, it, just like gene expression, just like genes are differentially expressed, isoforms can also be differentially expressed. So for example, we looked here at the BCL2 transcript, um, which is an apoptotic regulator. We found three isoforms that are um, differentially expressed between two of our clusters in the memory B cells. So this gives you kind of a higher resolution picture of what's happening in these very similar cells. All, they're all B cells, but they have subpopulations of cells that are doing different things. Okay, and then moving into the antibody sequences. So um, in order to get the, the high accuracy antibody sequences, we again had to develop kind of a custom um, bioinformatics pipeline here. But we take our um, single cell output, all the single cell transcriptomic data, and then we just filter it um, into the um, immunoglobulin B cell receptor transcripts. And we polish those, and then we can annotate those. Um, but at the end of this pipeline, it basically gives you really high quality consensus sequences for your um, antibody transcripts. And there's, again, a lot you can do with that. So it's a really, really rich data set. Um, I won't go into everything you, we did, but I, I will show a couple of examples. So one thing is you can look at membrane localization signals. So those are um, suggesting that the antibody transcript is expressed in the membrane. Um, that happens more on the memory B cells, as we saw, and um, is not in the plasma blast because the plasma blast secrete the antibodies. We can also then look at the isotypes, so that um, constant domain, the IGAs, the IGDs, the IGGs. We can look at the breakdown of um, which antibodies are in which class um, in the memory B cells and the plasma blast. And then finally, this, this next chart is, there's a lot going on here, but these are the V-gene alleles that we can um, actually annotate based on our personalized reference genome. So when you do it, when we map all the transcripts and the consensus sequences to our personal reference, we get really high quality um, assignment and annotation of the V-gene alleles. This is haplotyped. It's also isotyped. So there's a ton of information in there. And then we're looking at the somatic mutations in the, the antibodies relative to the initial V-gene alleles that are in that germline assembly. Um, I think we saw about 10% um, somatic mutation frequency of our antibodies that are secreted, and you can count which cells have those, do clonal expansion analysis, which we've also done, um, which I'm not showing today. Um, so there's, again, it's a really, really rich data set. There's a lot you can do here. So then the last thing we did um, was basically take the antibody consensus sequences and um, clone them and synthesize them to, to test them for efficacy. So we can do this by just taking the consensus sequences we got from blood um, directly, um, sequences, and clone them into an expression vector, um, and then test them against MMR antigens. So um, we did this. We found um, a lot of them are negative because this is kind of an unbiased approach. We just looked across all of the antibodies that we got. We, didn't, we weren't enriching any of these. Um, but we did find two that were active against um, measles F protein. Um, in, an, uh, in a fax um, binding assay. And then we found one clone that was um, duly active against um, rubella and mumps um, viral antigens. And then we found one that was actually truly neutralizing antibodies. So when this was done in an infection assay against measles, so measles is in infected into a cell line, and then we treat with the antibody to actually see that it's neutralizing um, and protective. So this is kind of really incredible that you can go just from sequencing data um, to actually synthesize an antibody that's effective against um, the, the viral antigen or the virus. So I'll stop there and do a, a quick summary. This is, um, we did a, a, um, a genome assembly of a really highly po polymorphic, structurally complex um, immunoglobulin um, region of the genome to look at kind of the total antibody diversity in this uh, individual. And then we did um, the full length single cell transcriptome. Um, an isoform expression across all the B cells that we isolated from blood. Um, and then finally, we, we generated these functional antibodies um, from the um, full-length consensus sequences and annotated those against um, the um, personalized allele assignments that we had um, in, that, in that individual. So just want to thank um, Mount Sinai, the collaborators, Dr. Ben Hurley and his lab, and then all the folks on the Nanopore Applications team that worked on this project. Thank you so much. Scott, I'm a little biased, but I thought that was a really